everyone, this is DIY Salvation Status Update, where I give you biblical perspectives on everyday issues. I am your host, Pastor E. Opele, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about vision. I came across a post the other day which read, if a woman rejects a man with vision and goes after a man with television, one day she will watch the man of, with vision on her husband's television. On the surface, this post, you know, sends positive vibes to vision as being primary to true lasting greatness and prosperity. But I did find out that the people who circulated this post were basically men, you know, who probably didn't have television. And I don't, I mean it in a broad sense now, because having television is more like a man who has a lot of money, all right? And so these are the men who are, um, don't, probably don't have a lot of money, but they're fronting vision and they're circulating this post to girls that probably they asked out and they wouldn't, you know, um, accept their proposal. And I've also had a lot of young men come to me and say things like, you know, it's always, you know, a man of vision, a man of vision and a man of vision. But I found out that there are a lot of women who married men of vision and didn't have television. And 13 years, 14 years, 15, some even 16 years down the line, they had to be the ones to buy the television, basically. So what I'm trying to say in this video is that there are a lot of loopholes in the so-called word of wisdom, you know, especially when it's the broke men that are flaunting this before a sister that they're proposing to as an, as an excuse, of course, to their poverty. And that's the reason why I'm doing this. Vision is not an excuse for one not to own a television. And when I say television, I also mean it's not an excuse for you not to, be, to have money. All right, and television also isn't a sign that one lacks vision. After all, vision is only a picture, a mental picture of the future. Everybody should have a vision, ideally, or everybody does have a vision, ideally. But what differentiates one person from the other person is that one person works his vision and eventually makes reality out of their dreams. Now, that's the kind of man that you want to marry a man of vision who owns the television and is also working out their vision. I think that's all makes sense, all right? So, so because we've seen so many men of vision that do absolutely nothing about their, their dreams, and for many ways, many years, I've watched them stagnate, all in the name of vision. I've known um, so many women also, you know, who um, had vision also, and because they got married, their vision was also, you know, killed just because of marriage. Marriage shouldn't be, you know, a situation where you, you now, you know, you're you know, kill all your, your dreams and your vision. So now, basically, I'm talking to the ladies. I know some men will be like, no, 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 especially if you feel like right now you know where you want to be. That's, that's not a problem. I will always say this. I'll say if for a man, he needs to be able to organize himself financially and not just financially, also like mentally. He needs to know also how much money he earns before a man is free to give his heart or his love and attention to a woman. Most men will not agree with what I'm saying right now. Why? Because they're not happy that I'm telling the, the ladies the truth. You know, why? Because also they want to eat the cake before they have it. You know, they want to eat the cake and have it. They all, yeah, they want to eat the cake and have it. <laughs> so what happens is that the men know that they need sex, so what they do is that they try to encourage the women to be in a relationship with them, even when they are not even um, ready to commit to that relationship because they don't have what it takes to commit to a relationship. That's what I call an unavailable man. A man who is focused on his career, focused on his dream, focused on his vision, because a man who has made the money that is in his heart and he's actually pursuing his dream is a fulfilled man. And when he's in a relationship, he does extremely well. So that's the kind of man you really want to go after at the end of the day. Now, ladies, I'll say this to you. Do not go after, do not be, have to go after a, a man who, you know, is broke and is trying to make, tell you things about the future. Basically, I say this, I say, any relationship that gives you hopes of the future, or like maybe your needs have to be met at a latter date, you know, you should not even be in that relationship. If your needs cannot be met at that beginning part of the relationship, as you meet the person and you're putting things down on the table and they're not being met at that point, just wait a little while longer because there's, it's just going to be a lot of heartaches. I know some ladies who say, no, it doesn't really matter if he doesn't have the money, I'm just going to be with him and I'm going to um, take care of him and things like that. 
are you ready in the long run to be able to handle it? Because God made a man a man and he made him, God made a man to be, to be the leader. You know, you can't um, like three years or four years down the line because you make more money than him and then you now start demanding respect from him or start talking to him the way you want to talk to him. You may be feeding him, you may be paying his rent, you may be doing everything that you think you're doing. But at the, at the end of the day, God still demands that you respect him. Can you do that? Can you be taking care of him the way you do take care of uh, maybe someone who's like a brother or someone who is a relative that's um, younger than you and still demand um, that that person be your man? Can you do it? If you can't do it, then there's no point for you down the um, um, years down the, the line, you now come back and you say things like, you know, he doesn't even take care of me or he doesn't do this and he doesn't do that. Because the way you started the relationship is the same way you're going to be able to, you're going to be, maintain it in the long run. All right. So let me just go over what I've said again. Ladies avoid such men who parry themselves as men of vision, and that being only the only that's the only thing that they bring to the table. So that because you eventually get hurt. Listen, any relationship that delays or postpones your immediate sat satisfaction in that relationship to a future date is potentially bad for you. And I've already explained what I mean by that. And I also did say that for a man to focus on a woman to give her all the attention that he needs. You know, he wants to first settle his job and how much he earns. Any man who is still struggling with his vision and has not yet taken off, the vision has not taken off, should by all means be avoided. Let him discover himself first. Allow him. Let him discover and know what he wants from life or else he will not appreciate you or appreciate your effort. And that's what I hear a lot of young um, women say these days. They say, he's not even appreciating you. I suffered with him all these years and he's not appreciating it. He never asked you to make those sacrifices in, this, in the first place. All right. He told you point blank that he was not going to be able to um, give you any of those things. And you agreed. So you can't demand them at a later date. All right. So now let me add this. If a man is struggling with addiction, he is a potentially unavailable man. And when I mean addiction, I mean addiction of any kind, whether addiction to sex, addiction to drugs, addiction to um, smoking, whatever it is. He is unavailable. Do not go after such a man. No matter what he's telling you, do not be in such a relationship. Run for your life. That's what I'll tell you, ladies. And if the, there are guys that are watching me and you have an addiction and you're feeling bad about it, then quit the addiction already. All right? A man who is sick frequently, you know, in pain and all your relationship talk revolves around, you know, when he's going to get better. All right? Those kind of relationships, avoid them. I know of a lady who was um, in love with a man, just met him and loved a man and he had, you know, some issues with depression and things like that, you know. And then she's like, at least I make him feel better. No, you don't really. You're just going to, you're just helping. Yes, you're right that, at that point, he needs you. But what about you? Do you not need him? Is he there for you when you need him? Then your weight is like, no, I know that if I can be with him at this particular, I um, mean, this hard time, then in the future he's going to be there with me. For me, like I said, any relationship that postpones your immediate satisfaction in a relationship, avoid it because really you can't tell what the future holds. You do not know what your future is. You don't know what his own future is. All right. So avoid such a relationship because you're, you're only just cheapening yourself for, for, for that particular person. If a man wants you, wants you, let him win you. If he can't, let him go. Now, some of you say, oh, but there are not a lot of men and all of that. No, 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 no. That's just your mindset, all right? There are not a lot of good guys. That's just your mindset. Who is going to love me like him? That's just your mindset. And I always say this. I'll say that the, the controlling beliefs of your life is what has gotten you to the point where you are right now. That means you need to change your mindset and understand that, listen, there's this wide spectrum of possibilities. There are men everywhere. There's a kind of man that you need for now. And there's also a kind of man that you need for your future. What you need is a man that will be now with you and also be your future man. Not how many years down the line and then you're like, this man, I never knew he was going to be like this. Now, how are you going to be able to have such a foresight? When you are dependent upon God, he will be able to show you things. You know, all some things that he's going to be able to show you things. Now, today I said I was going to talk about vision, and now I've gone into relationships. I'm saying all this <laughs> many things. I'm just going to go through um, the, the 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 things I wrote down for vision, so that I leave you with something. All right, a principle of living. Habakkuk chapter two, verse um, two to four. You know, and the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is there for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Do it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up 
is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. This scripture is key to the subject of vision, and I'm just going to go through it. Number one, your vision must be written down. And I'm speaking to, I started by saying that vision is not an excuse for you not to have television. And also, if, that you have television does not mean that you lack vision, all right? They, they're actually supposed to go hand in hand. Even the scripture talks about it, it says, in the end, it will speak. All right. So the first thing is that for you to be able to get your vision, don't just sit down and say, this is what the Lord told me and then you are just waiting. Or this is what I believe in my heart I'm going to do and then you're just waiting. That time will never come. The vision first must be written down. Why is it written down? The scripture also tells us that the, so that vision help us. People can catch your vision and run with it. There are some people that are born with a dream. Others are born to follow a dream. They are not, they are not bad. Like people that follow a dream, they are not um, less important. They are very, very important to the people that are dreamers. The dreamers see the picture. The people that actually follow the dreamers actually make it happen. Okay, so some people have to see the vision. Others will just hear the, see the vision and just follow it. So, but it has to be written down so that vision helpers may read, understand, and follow through. Now, the next thing is that your vision must re reflect the purpose of God in the gospel scheme for it to amount to anything. We are like our Father. God likes it that when you are interested in what He's interested in, that then He will be able to give you like wings to fly basically so if you have a vision your vision must reflect the purpose of god in the gospel scheme for it to amount into anything at all so if you have something that is connected to god let me tell you it will work it will work so good all right and then the next thing is that the vision is for an appointed time now for the fact that it's for an appointed time does it mean that you're just going to let it and just be waiting no i remember the time that the lord gave me the vision for our church it was about 14 years ago 2003 about 30, yeah 30, 14 years 13 to 14 years ago and that was 2003 and he gave me the vision for our church and i really didn't know what it was and i felt like lord should i just do something or should i start gathering people and he said to me he said put it in a can and put a lid on it and that was exactly what i did and in the meanwhile, what am I supposed to be doing? He said, build capacity. So I started learning. I started working with other missionaries. I started working with other pastors. I served a lot of pastors. And I kept on like that. Ten years plus more, that's where the Lord says, now is the time for the vision to come out. And I even didn't even feel as if I was capable at that point in time. But the vision is for an appointed time. When the clouds must have gathered rain, one day it will soon pour over the earth. So in the meanwhile, build capacity. And the final thing though, the fifth thing is that we wait for vision by sowing seeds into that vision by faith. You know that this vision is going to come to pass. So what do you do? You begin to water it. You begin to sow seeds, you water it. You sow seeds, you water it. You build yourself. You build capacity. You organize structure. You read to improve your skill. You learn other techniques concerning that thing because you know one day it's going to come to pass. And the final thing, your vision will only become reality only through the mechanism or operation of faith. That's what I, that's the last um, scripture verse 4 was reading, was talking about the mechanism of faith. That means you have to exercise your faith. You have to just start, step out on faith, in faith, and then just do that thing. Just go. Don't think about the finances. Just go. The provision is already on the way and everything will be made available as you go. But the step of faith is very, very important. So conclusion, it all starts with your imagination. Think of Think of something and then of course it will end in reality. Your vision will become reality. Thank you so much for watching. It's been my pleasure really sharing this. I'm really excited about the, the, the topic of vision as you can see. But thank you for watching. All right. Like you could please like our, our, our page on YouTube, our channel on YouTube, DIY Salvation Live Show. We are on Facebook also, DIY Salvation Live Show as well. Thank you so much everyone. Bye-bye.